All right, let's dive into some tips to help you speak English better and more confidently. And we'll do it without taking up too much of your time. Sound good. Sounds great to me. Today we're looking at a YouTube video, Learn English with Podcast Conversation, Episode 4. It's from Speak English Smartly. We're going to really break down the advice in this video. We'll look at the how and the why of the tips. The first tip is a little different. Basically, it's about narrating your life in English, obviously. Huh. The video says, talk about what you're doing, what you see, how you feel. Be your own commentator. Imagine you're walking down the street and in your head you're thinking, okay, I'm walking to the store. I see a lot of people out and about today. I wonder where everyone's going. You know, it might feel a little awkward at first, yeah. talking to yourself, kind of. But it's actually a really good way to get your brain thinking in English. Instead of translating everything first, you're thinking directly in the language. It's like building that muscle memory for speaking, right? Yeah. You're not stopping to think, how do I say this? You're <sighs> just thinking it in English already. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the more you do it, the more natural it becomes. You're training your brain to use English without that extra translation step. The video even suggests asking yourself questions out loud. Like, what am I doing next? Hmm, I think I'll get some coffee. You know, it might sound a little weird, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Really? How so? Think about it. When we talk to other people, we're not just using words. We're asking questions. We're responding. Right. We're using different parts of our brains. Oh, I see what you mean. So talking to yourself, even if it feels silly, actually helps you practice those conversation skills. It bridges that gap between just knowing the language and actually using it naturally. Yes. It's like taking those English words and phrases out of your textbook and bringing them to life. Okay, tip number two is all about pronunciation. Specifically, it's about mimicking native speakers. The video uses this example of repeating the phrase, what a beautiful day, mm. you know, paying attention to the accent, the tone, the rhythm. Right. It seems pretty straightforward. Is there more to it than just, you know, copying how someone says something? Definitely. Mimicry isn't just about parroting sounds. It's about training your ear and your mouth to work together in a new way. The more you hear those sounds, the more you practice making those sounds, the easier it gets. It's like anything else. Practice makes perfect, right? Well, practice definitely makes progress. There's also a neurological aspect to it. Every time you hear and repeat those correct sounds, you're strengthening those pathways in your brain. So over time, it becomes more automatic. Interesting. They also suggest recording yourself saying the phrase and comparing it to the original recording. Kind of like having a pronunciation coach in your pocket, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's a great way to spot those subtle differences in sounds that you might not notice otherwise. Like maybe you're struggling with the vowel sound in beautiful or the way your voice rises and falls at the end of the sentence. It helps you pinpoint those areas to work on. Exactly. Now, tip number three is all about expanding your vocabulary. That one seems pretty obvious. Learn new words and phrases every day. The video talks about dictionaries and apps and things like that. But what I found interesting was the focus on reading, like actually reading things you're interested in, in English. That's such a key point. It's like the difference between doing homework and doing something you love. Right. So if you're really into sports, you should be reading sports articles in English. If you're a big science nerd, dive into some English science news articles. Makes sense to me. And, you know, the reason it works so well is context. When you learn new words in the context of something you're already interested in, you're way more likely to remember them. It's just how our brains work. So it's not just memorizing a bunch of random words, it's learning words you'll actually use. Right, and don't underestimate those little things. Writing the new words down, looking them up, even making sentences with them, all of that really helps cement them in your memory. Okay, tip number four is probably the most important one. Practice with native or fluent English speakers. Yeah, this is where the rubber meets the road. You can know all the grammar rules in the world, have a huge vocabulary, but if you don't actually use it, you'll never really become fluent. You got to put it into practice. Yeah. And the video really focuses on overcoming fear and nervousness. They mention things like language exchange programs, conversation clubs, even just finding a friend to chat with in English. All great options. And you know what the best part is? What's that? When you talk to real people, you're exposed to all the little things you won't find in a textbook. Mm -hmm. Different accents, slang, idioms, cultural references. I can imagine that being a little intimidating at first. It's totally understandable to feel nervous. But the more you do it, the more confident you'll become. You'll start to realize that everyone makes mistakes, even native speakers. So it's not about being perfect. It's about getting comfortable with making those mistakes. Exactly. 
And the more comfortable you are, the more fluent you'll sound. So it's a win-win. It really is. You know, one thing that struck me about these tips is that they all seem to push you outside your comfort zone. You're absolutely right. And you know what? That's where the real learning happens. When you challenge yourself, when you try things that feel a little bit scary, that's when your brain really starts to grow. And it's not just about speaking, right? We can connect these tips to other areas of language learning too, like listening. Oh, absolutely. They're all connected. Take that first tip, the one about narrating your day. It can actually help you become a better listener too. Really? How does that work? Well, think about it. When you're listening to someone speak English, try doing the same thing. Mentally summarize what you're hearing in English. It turns passive listening into active engagement. So instead of just hearing the words, I'm actively trying to understand and process them in English. Exactly. And if you do this regularly, you'll start to pick up on patterns in how English is spoken. It'll become easier to understand what you hear in real time. That makes sense. And what about mimicking native speakers? How does that tie into listening? Mimicry is all about training your ear to hear those subtle differences in sounds. When you focus on pronunciation, on intonation, on rhythm, you're basically fine-tuning your ear to pick up on all those nuances. So it's like becoming a detective, noticing all the little details that make a big difference in how something is said. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. And just like you can record yourself speaking to check your pronunciation, you can also record yourself summarizing what you heard. It's a good way to check how well you understood. Okay, that's a neat trick. Now, what about expanding your vocabulary? That seems like it would obviously help with listening. Of course. Mm. The more words you know, the easier it is to understand what you're hearing. And remember how we talked about reading things you enjoy? Well, the same goes for listening. You mean like listening to podcasts or watching shows about things that interest me? Exactly. When you're already engaged with the topic, your brain's more likely to pick up new words without even trying. It feels less like studying and more like just having fun. That's the best way to learn. All right, we've talked about how those first three tips connect to listening. But what about practicing with native speakers? I mean, that one seems obvious, right? I'm definitely. Nothing beats real-life conversation for improving your listening skills. You're hearing authentic English with all its quirks and variations. Right, you get exposure to different accents, slang, you know, all the real-world stuff. Exactly. And don't forget about the confidence boost you get from successfully navigating a conversation. The more confident you feel, the more relaxed you'll be, and the easier it'll be to focus on what you're hearing. That's so true. It's that feeling of, hey, I can actually do this, and suddenly everything seems a little less scary. So to sum it up, all four of these tips for better speaking can also make you a better listener. It's like a two-for-one deal. Yeah. And you know, what's really fascinating is that focusing on one area of language learning can actually improve other areas too. It just shows you how interconnected everything is. It's a reminder that language learning isn't just about separate skills. It's about bringing all those pieces together. Now, the video also touches on something that a lot of English learners struggle with, and that's fear and nervousness when speaking. Mm -hmm. I know I've definitely been there. That feeling of self-consciousness, worrying about making mistakes, it can really hold you back. You know, it's so common to feel that way. But a lot of times, that fear comes from a misunderstanding about what mistakes really are. What if, instead of seeing them as failures, we saw them as opportunities? I know that's easier said than done. I mean, it's natural to want to sound perfect, especially when you're speaking a language that isn't your first language. Absolutely. Uh -huh. But changing the way you think about mistakes can make a huge difference. Instead of trying to avoid them at all costs, try to see them as valuable feedback. I like that, turning mistakes into stepping stones. But how do you actually make that mental shift? It takes practice. But it starts with remembering that everyone makes mistakes, even native English speakers. Language is constantly changing, and mistakes are just a part of that. So it's okay to mess up. It's part of the process. Exactly. And when you start to see mistakes as a chance to learn, you'll be more willing to take risks, experiment with the language, and speak more freely without that constant fear of judgment. Speaking of taking risks, the video also talks about consistency in language learning. Yes, consistency is key. It's like anything else you want to get good at, whether it's playing an instrument, playing a sport, regular practice is how you make progress. So it's about making language learning a habit, something you do regularly, even if it's just for a little bit each day. Exactly. And remember, consistency doesn't have to mean sticking to a rigid schedule. 
It's about finding ways to incorporate English into your life in ways that you enjoy. So things like listening to music in English, watching a TV show with English subtitles, even just chatting with a language partner online, those all count. Absolutely. It's about making language learning a natural part of your life, something you look forward to, not something you dread. Okay, let's go back to some of the specifics from the video for a moment. I'm curious about what you think of their tips for expanding your vocabulary. I think they're spot on. Dictionaries and language learning apps are fantastic tools for actively building your vocabulary. It's like having a language lab in your pocket. And then there's that whole idea of reading things that you're genuinely interested in. Right. That's where the magic happens. It turns vocabulary learning from a chore into a journey of exploring your passions. It's like finding that sweet spot where learning meets enjoyment. It just makes the whole process more effective and, well, more fun. Exactly. And don't forget about the power of being mindful of the language you encounter every day. Whether you're reading a news article, watching a movie, listening to a podcast, make a conscious effort to notice new words and phrases. It's like turning everyday life into a language lesson. That's a great way to think about it. And when you come across a new word, take the time to look it up, understand its meaning, even try using it in a sentence. That active engagement helps cement the word in your memory. Okay, what about practicing your pronunciation? The video mentioned that technique of recording yourself and comparing it to a native speaker. I can imagine that being a little, well, intimidating. It can be a little nerve wracking at first, but it's one of the most effective ways to pinpoint those areas where your pronunciation could be better. I can see how it would be humbling, but ultimately helpful. Exactly. Think of it as having your own personal pronunciation coach available anytime, anywhere. And there's no pressure no fear of being judged. You can work on your pronunciation at your own pace in a safe and comfortable environment. That's a good point. All right, let's talk about practicing with native or fluent speakers. The video really emphasizes the importance of finding those opportunities. And for a good reason. This is where you take all that knowledge you've been building and put it to the test in the real world. It's where you really see how all those pieces fit together. And as we discussed before, it exposes you to authentic English, the kind you just can't get from a textbook. Exactly. Interacting with real people forces you to think on your feet, to adapt to different communication styles, to navigate the unpredictable flow of a real conversation. It's like having a language immersion experience without leaving your home. Exactly. And while it can be nerve-wracking at first, the rewards are immense. It's about building confidence, fluency, and a deeper understanding of the culture behind the language. All things you can't really get from a book. Absolutely. And let's not forget about the potential for forming meaningful connections with people from different backgrounds. That in itself can be a powerful motivator to keep learning. Speaking of motivation, what are your thoughts on its role in language learning? I think it's absolutely crucial. It's the fuel that keeps you going, especially when things get tough. If you don't have a strong sense of why you're learning, it's easy to lose steam and give up when you hit those inevitable roadblocks. So true. It's what keeps you coming back for more even when you're tired, busy, or feeling a bit discouraged. And it's important to remember that motivation can come from many different sources. It could be the desire to connect with family members who speak another language, a love of travel, a career aspiration, or simply the pure joy of challenging yourself and learning something new. The key is to identify what truly inspires you and tap into that source of motivation to keep your language learning journey engaging and rewarding. It's about finding that personal connection, that spark that ignites your passion and makes you want to keep going to keep exploring. Exactly. And once you've found that spark, it's important to nurture it. So how do you suggest doing that? One way is to set realistic goals and celebrate those wins along the way. Mm. Don't get caught up in the idea of achieving perfection. Instead, focus on steady progress and acknowledge your successes, no matter how small they may seem. It's about recognizing that every step forward, every new word learned, every conversation navigated is a victory worth celebrating. Exactly. And surrounding yourself with a supportive community of fellow language learners can be incredibly motivating too. It's like having your own personal cheerleading squad for your language journey, sharing tips, offering encouragement, even just commiserating over those inevitable struggles. It can make a world of difference. Absolutely. And don't underestimate the power of simply reminding yourself why you started learning the language in the first place. Revisiting that initial spark of inspiration, that sense of purpose that fueled your decision to learn. Precisely. And when the going gets tough, as it inevitably will at times, 
tap into that wellspring of motivation to keep you moving forward. It's like having a compass to guide you through the ups and downs of the language learning journey, always pointing you towards your ultimate destination. And speaking of destination, the video touches upon a rather interesting point about the nature of language learning. You mean the idea that there's no real finish line? Yeah, it's not about reaching some point where you've suddenly mastered the language. It's more about embracing the process, the journey of continuous learning. Right. Always growing and discovering something new. This deep dive has been so interesting. We've been talking about those practical tips from the Speak English Smartly video. And, you know, we've mostly been focusing on how to speak English more confidently. But as we've seen, a lot of these tips can actually be applied to other areas of language learning, too. They really can. It's yeah. all connected. For instance, how do you think these tips could be used to help someone become a better writer in English? Hmm. That's a great question. It really shows how all these skills work together. Let's take that first tip we discussed, narrating your day. Uh huh. Instead of speaking your thoughts, you could write them down. Yeah. Focus on expressing yourself in a clear and, you know, grammatically correct way. That makes sense. It's like keeping a journal, but with the specific goal of improving your English writing. Exactly. And remember how we talked about mimicking native speakers to improve your pronunciation? Yeah. Well, you can apply that same idea to writing, too. Oh, I see what you mean. So instead of just listening to how native speakers pronounce words, we should also pay attention to how they write. You got it. Mm -hmm. When you read well-written English textbooks, articles, anything really were, you start to unconsciously absorb those patterns. The sentence structure, the vocabulary, the overall style. It's like learning by osmosis, just by immersing yourself in good writing. That's a great way to put it. And remember that technique of recording yourself speaking and then listening back to check your pronunciation, mm -hmm. well, you can do something similar with writing. You mean like write something and then go back and edit it? Exactly. When you review and revise your own work, you develop a more critical eye. You start to notice those little errors in areas where your writing can be stronger. It's like becoming your own personal writing coach. Okay, so we've talked about m narrating, mimicking, and reviewing. What about expanding your vocabulary? I mean, that one seems like a no-brainer for better writing. Of course. The more words you know, the more precisely and expressively you can communicate your ideas in writing. And reading plays a big part in that, right? Huge. It exposes you to different writing styles, helps you learn new words, and just generally sparks your creativity. So reading material that interests you is like a double win. It helps you learn new words, and it makes you a better writer. Exactly. And finally, let's touch on practicing with native or fluent speakers. How does that translate to improving your writing? Hmm. That's a good question. It's all about feedback. Having someone who's really good at English look over your writing can be incredibly helpful. They can point out grammatical mistakes, suggest different ways to phrase things, and just generally help you polish your writing style. So even though the video focused on speaking, we can see how those tips can be adapted to improve other skills, like writing. It's all connected. It's been a fascinating deep dive. We've explored all those practical tips from the Speak English Smartly video. We learned how to speak English more confidently and fluently. And we even discovered how those same tips can help us improve other areas of English learning. It's been a great discussion. You've given our listeners a lot to think about today. Before we wrap up, any final thoughts you'd like to leave them with? Here's a question to ponder. If you could design your own language learning boot camp, what would it look like? What activities, resources, and strategies would you prioritize to make the most of your time and effort? Ooh, that's a great question. We've given them the tools. Now it's up to them to build their own path to fluency. Exactly. Remember, everyone learns differently. There's no one right way to learn a language. So experiment, have fun, and find what works best for you. That's great advice. Until next time, keep those language fires burning.